Good morning, DMV. You are tuning to the kickback with me, Diamond B. Frazier. We are back, back, two times, back to back. Yes, I got on the same outfit because supposed to hear. I ain't dirty, but that's what I do. Did you supposed to hear me? Yeah, no. No, you can hear me right here. Oh, shit. Sure. It's oh, a fluke. Yeah. It's for Not the bad. look. Oh, all right. You like, know, you supposed you know, to be so acting like you know, they're doing something. It's all cool. So I got with me Danny. Danny yeah, yeah. with the flicks. Danny flicks for short, you know. Danny flicks. Okay, so so who are we? We are audio engineer. We, yeah, we are artists. We flicking it up. We what we doing? We do audio. We record. We mixing. Start a whole company, numbersgang.net. You can go check that out, too. We shoot flicks, too. Cinematography, photography, recording, and mixing on the go, basically. Dang. And I'm basically the number one artist on there. I'm looking for artists, too, so... So you a one stop shop? Yeah, that's the plan. You know, Keep what I'm saying if you house. ain't looking for a verse, I'm shooting scenes, trailers, whatever you need, man. Still shots, whatever you need, I got it. That's important. Staying busy. So before we get into it, into it. So you mm-hmm. came in with crutches, and I know yeah. your underarms is burning. Yeah, your foot throbbing. How did we hey, get man. into this predicament? I mean, how would you know the pain like that? It was already there. I don't that know. He told me I was just yeah, going by yeah, him. Yeah, motorcycle accident. I was teaching somebody how to ride. I've been riding for like four years, though, but I was teaching somebody how to ride. I knew the caution when you're standing in front of the bike, but naturally I could hit the kill switch, catch the bike. I taught like three people before. You know what I'm saying? It's the first time I've actually got hit by my own bike, but hey, you know what I'm saying? Hey, whoa. Yeah, but look, I saved a life, saved the bike. Hey, I can still ride three months from now, so I'll be all right. I ain't worrying about it. I oh, broke so my you... foot, though, by the way, if I ain't leave with that. You know what I'm saying? But It's hey. broken. Yeah, yeah, that, that joint broke. So you got bro. three months with a no foot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Three you taking baths? Well, no, nah, we doing showers. We going straight at it. The crutch uh, right there. You know what I'm I didn't know if you could. You had to be in a bathtub with your leg nah, out. No, nah, no, I can't do that. That's too romantic. I ain't got enough candles for that. I ain't even gonna hold you. Oh, okay. I okay. need that. So you put the little trash bag on it. Fuck no. We just go. My bad. I'm cussing and all that. But no, nah, we don't do that. It's we just okay. Go we can. Yeah, yeah. That. We just go straight at it. You know what I'm saying? Just stand in there, hold a crutch, and go right at it. But don't it melt if it get wet? Do you nah, got a hard nah, cast? We passed that. We passed that stage. Oh, okay, we okay. passed that stage. We have to. You got to adjust stage and just take your time. So you said you were standing in front of the bike. Yeah, so, naturally, like like this. I got Jixit, and um, it's dyno jetted. So you know what I'm saying? That jump kick off. You know what I'm saying? One person I was teaching, she got, you know, background in bikes, background in ATVs. Mm-hmm. She was able to ride in a day. Day two, we doing turns. We started in first gear. I'm able to, the way my, like, my windshield is set up, I can hit the kill switch from just standing in front of it. Mm-hmm. So, you know what I mean? I've done it before multiple times. When you see somebody about to buckle or something, look like they about to, like, fall, right. hit the throttle, do a little extra. I kill switch it every time. This time when she do it, though, she just had some speed on her. I'm not going to hold you. You ain't know it was coming at. Why you sound like um. Birdman from the <laughs> fifth floor? <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold yeah. down. I ain't see the speed coming. Look, man, I, I lunged at the switch, and you know, maybe I overestimated how fast it was or, or something. I missed that thing. I'm trying to tell you, I missed it. So by me missing the switch, I'm like head on with the bike now. You know what I'm saying? We oh, so you riding it? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm basically on riding? that jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was already oh, doing man. like 35, 40, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, it's either let her take the damage. She ain't had none of the riding gear on. Let's get that out the way. Oh, man. And you know what I'm saying? I already knew I didn't want my bike to get messed up. You know what I'm saying? She should have came out on hers, but that wasn't the case. I was thinking with something else. But we're going to leave with that alone. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you know, that so, gets you, you know in trouble sometimes. Always do. I, hey, you know what I mean? Got whole foot. But it is what it is. So you normally wear riding gear or you don't? No, I wear it. I wear oh, you it do, but time. she didn't? Nah. Oh, okay. She ain't wear it this time. She had my helmet on though. She had my jacket on, but you know what I mean. She just like adjusted it a little bit, so technically the jacket was open. So she would have got all that damage up in there. She got a little t-shirt on, so she ain't had nothing protecting nothing else. And then on top of that, the visor was up. You know what I mean. Oh, so man. she would have fell. She would have probably messed up all that too. So but now like, y'all in a relationship at this point. Nah, you just nah, saved the woman's nah. life. See, that's what I thought. You know what I mean? Dang. See, but you can't assume things like that sometimes. You just got to wait and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? So she was teaching you to ride with her mans? Nah, nah. Oh, okay. Nah, so like, like, she was single. That's the key. She was single. Is she right, still you know? single? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, still yeah, got a yeah, chance. Yeah. You didn't broke yeah. your foot for the woman yeah, at no, this she, point. She had a little kid out there, too. That's not, that was like, it was like three things that made me, you know what I'm saying, jump. I could have got out the way. Let's just leave with that. Right. I could have got out the way. It was enough time. So you was it. while you was riding it on the front, you was no, processing in your mind. Am I gonna let her? No, go? no, I oh, wasn't in that. Lord. My mind, like I known Shawty for a while. You know, what I mean? okay. I've known her since like junior high. This your best friend. 
you could say that. You okay. know what I'm saying? But I known her all the way up until now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, you know what I mean? I know her kid and all that. You know what I mean? So teaches on. But basically, you know what I mean? I didn't want to lose the bike. I didn't want to see her get hurt, and especially not in front of her son. You know what I mean? Like four, four or five, I think. Well, you look like you yeah. intact. You know, your yeah, foot is I off, mean, but you don't look like you I've been through several accidents been... before, though. It's not my first time being in a bike accident, but first time getting hit by my own bike, though. Yeah. So why do you feel like, despite all these injuries, I'm just going to keep going? Oh, I'm still going on a bike, though. That ain't, that ain't about to stop me. I'm not going to hold your bike life. So are you on the main road with people, or you in the backyard or a big field uh, or something? How does that work? I'm mean? not a biker. Oh, I'm, I'm everywhere. I don't, I don't even ride a car. I don't even got a car. I'm not going to hold you. I go through a so snow how you get rain. here? He drove? Yeah, oh, because you way. can't. Yeah, as of right now, and I can't hit the you know red brake right now, so I'm dealing with all front. I got to be able to turn, so I'm not touching the front brake if I'm turning, so I'm cool. Oh, shoot. I You're right. Yeah, out. be careful. You're going to clip up, bro. That's game over, bro. I'm not even banging with it. Nah. I wait. Chante. That's a fact. So your father actually got you interested in music. Yeah, yeah. God rest his soul. So, yeah. um, usually when tragic situations like that happen, people try to you know put certain things to rest. Yeah. And it's like you know my dad is the one who really got me into it, like writing music, and mm -hmm. you know he's no longer here. I'm just gonna dead that and move on. What made you be like, nah, let's let's keep this alive and keep going? I mean, naturally we was doing it together. He mm -hmm. made a LLC, Slick Tunes Music Group. He made a publishing group. I still use that till this day. I released my music through that. But I still got my mm -hmm. own company moving forward, too. So I'm still using it, you know, together. So I won't let, you know, his legacy die. I'm going to bring that along with it every time. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. So someone who's actually going through a loss, because unfortunately, especially in our community, in the DMV area specifically, it's happening more often than not. Like, what advice would you give to someone going through losing somebody you keep moving that's the, that's the main thing you got to keep moving it take every second every day is going to be a, a test mm -hmm. and you got to make sure you pass that test so is it like cry scream get it out and move on or it's like sweep it on the rug and, and life go mm -hmm. on you got to keep it moving that's a hard question right there because some people you know deal with pain differently me personally i'm one of those ones that kind of like tuck it in and then try to move with it every day and then let it either subside mm -hmm. or you know how most people assume it'll go to the worst and you know that's pent up aggression and all this other stuff but if right. you know how to handle it each day and you take it each day at a time you should be fine but so, most people you know if they want to cry it out do what you got to do to get through it if that helps you get by but when the last time you cried not gonna hold you been a while i haven't i ain't it's not I even thought been you a while gonna say when your i haven't foot got cried hurt. until like the day i found out he passed like and i rushed to the hospital to know what it was right like that was literally the last time in a long time i cried i really only cry when i miss somebody like when oh. they gone i can't see them tomorrow that's pretty much you got to shed that tear that's of what course. it is but moving forward after you shed it it's no need for you to keep crying that's not what they want right you know they want you to keep living for them don't miss you know what i mean don't worry about the images and all the bad stuff that they did back then just move forward with it so is that, is that something that was taught to you, like, growing up, or you nah, kind of just found you your way? To, like, like, something you had to develop on your own. It's not something that can be, like, I, f I feel like it's not something that can be installed into someone. You got to right. be able to build that on your own. Well, I definitely agree, but a lot of times men are told not to show a sign of weakness, and yeah. crying can be put in that category as a weakness, although I don't feel like it is. You should express yeah. your feelings. So... Just as a man, like with your dad, did you guys ever talk about emotions? No, nah, I'm not gonna hold you, man. My father wasn't one of the emotional ones. We we hug each other real fast and be like, all right, bro, that's like too many seconds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's Is pretty your much mom it. like the yeah. the hugger, the kiss? Fifty you. fifty, you know. If you get okay. hurt, she like she a home nurse. She do the whole nine yards. You ain't you ain't moving an inch. Oh. But you know, if she got punched you in the chest, she gonna punch you in the chest. That's what I'm talking like, about, mama. Hey, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, yeah. When the last time you got punched in your chest by your mama? I, I moved out. So oh, okay. I, so you like, gotta, now. She got to come get me to punch me. I ain't going to hold you. And then I'm going <laughs> to ride off if she try to pull up anyway. So she got to catch me first. You know, all that in one. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I remember yeah. them days. Yeah, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you graduated from Omega Studio School yeah. of Applied Recording Arts and Sciences. Was it actually worth it to go to school for that? 
T yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question. I already went into the program with enough knowledge. I went in there with um a different mind state. When I graduated, I felt like I got enough of what I needed to get out of there. I learned a lot of more tips, a lot of new plugins, a lot of new everything. I dealt with a lot of Grammy nominated people, people that actually won Grammys. So I've been around a lot of different artists, a lot of different engineers. I went to several conventions, so it opened up my network, so it was beneficial for me. So yeah. what made you be like, eh, I don't... I mean, my father was an engineer. He mm-hmm. was a producer, too. Right. And he, you know, tried to drop a couple tracks here and there, you know what I mean? But I was like, all right, I might as well jump in it, too. I had nothing else to do. He had a studio in the house. What else am I going to do? It's like a whole booth. Right, you might as well you take full well advantage. Drop something, man. So right. That's what I did and kept going with it. Wouldn't let it stop. So if someone wants to be an audio engineer or a recording artist, would you encourage them to actually go through to school? school? Uh, depends. Depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you can go to school for different reasons, for network reasons like I did. But if you, you have that passion, that drive, you can go and self-taught. You know what I mean? It's a lot of self-taught engineers that are beyond me right now. Right. And I went to school for it. It's a lot of people that went to school that, uh, you know, passed a lot of people that are self-taught. It's how much drive you got. Okay. What can push you? That's true. Do you consider yourself an educated black brother? Everybody do. I can't hold I can't sit here and say, nah. So, yeah, I'm always educated. I got to feel that way. The reason I say this is because I don't know why when it comes to black men, when you go to school or you go to college, they feel like they have to put that word educated as if black people just walk in aren't just naturally educated. Nah, you never hear that. a white person say, I'm a white educated yeah. male. So why yeah. do you feel like we have to like put that that stamp on it? I mean, some people feel like they need to put that stamp because the way that our community has been, like, set in stone, you know? So mm-hmm. they feel like if we put it out there, like, with a sticker, or at least verbally with that verbal sticker, you at least can accept that as what it is and take that with everyone that you meet that's like me, you know? So if you walk out and then say, for instance, I'm talking to a white person, I'm talking to anyone other than me, someone will feel as they got to say, yeah, I'm an educated black man, if you already assumed that I wasn't educated from just looking at me. What does that prove? Like, does does college equate to being educated, or can I just be a reader and somebody to just research things and be educated? Like, college what makes doesn't it mean you smart? So why? No. So how do people present themselves as an educated somebody? Like, what makes you put that? When women say, "I want an educated man," what does that mean? Or what do you feel like they mean by that? Well, when they say that to me, I feel like someone that can carry a conversation that's not like constantly. Doing what they don't feel it would be progressive in what they need to do. If you here with somebody and they're looking for an educated person, you need to be able to talk, be able to be around some, be sociable instead of being, a, a, you know, anti everything. You don't want to be around nobody. You, you always angry. You know, like you know, how they always want to say the angry black man is that and the third. So right. if they already see you, they're gonna label you as oh, he probably has a temper from just looking at you. They already assume you're a hoodlum from just looking at you. So. If you're going to go with that route, then you got to just take that pride with it, at least to me. Have you always been this mellow? You seem very cool, yeah, calm, yeah. collect. Like, you was yet. never the angry black man. Nah. The temper nah. tantrum, I'm the lash off. out. I'm going to walk off. There's too many people out here to worry about one, so i walk. I like yeah. your spirit. That is what's up. So, all right, so we're going to get into a segment. Mm-hmm. It's called Would It or Quit It? So I'm going to ask you some questions, statements. You tell me if you would it, that means you agree. Uh, Quit it uh, like nah, but then you got to tell me why. I bet. We could do that. All right, so 18 does not make you an adult in the dating world. If a 27-year-old pursues an 18-year-old, you'll see a ton of raised eyebrows. I'm you not going to hold you. Could you repeat that one more time? No, nah, you good. You good. I it was a, it was a handful. All right, I'm going to break right. it down to you. All right, cool. 18 cool. does not make you an adult in the dating world. Mm. Boom. That's one part. We got that. If a 27-year-old man pursues an 18-year-old woman, you'll see a ton of raised eyebrows. Right, okay. Are you with that or no? Nah? All right, I got to say no. Nah, I'm, I'm, I, I can't fade it. I can't fade it. What you mean? Like you don't agree with that statement or you don't? I don't agree with the 27-year-old reaching out to the 18-year-old. So 18 does not make you an adult because, you know, once you turn 18, you be feeling like. You could feel that way, but if you still got limitations, you can't buy stuff, you can't do stuff, you're not really an adult all the way. You got limitations. So 18, you move out on your own. You paying your own bills, no matter, you know, how big or small. You're you're a pre-adult. Just like a preteen. So what stamps it? 
Like 21. being able to rent a car? I would say 21. You can have good credit. You can have your own car. You can have your own townhouse. I had the same at, at 18 and still had limitations where I couldn't buy nothing. I couldn't buy no liquor. I still had to ask somebody. I couldn't go in a casino. I couldn't go party. I couldn't do what I really wanted to do, but I still felt like I was an adult at the end of the day. So you feel like a 27-year-old male would kind of be robbing that girl's like... Yeah. Yeah, you like, like youth to kind of like grow up. You trying to take her youth and live that because you're probably going through something that makes you feel, you know, you're you reaching that age now. So but think I, about it on the reverse. Because a lot of men that I know be like, yeah, when I was younger, older women used to be coming at me. I yeah. mean, every dude I know probably said that. So if it was the tables turn, you got a 27-year-old woman like looking at an 18-year-old dude. Do you still have that same feeling? Yeah. Yeah. I still feel the same. Why She's still you? trying to do the same thing that the guy would be in the same shoes, trying to live that young life through them, even though that the older life or whatever they're doing currently isn't probably going their way. So they're looking for that young spark, something to brighten up what they're going through while they're going through something down or dark times or something. That's how I see it. So, okay, let's say, because there's a lot of hormone stuff in the food. Like, mm -hmm. kids ain't looking young like how we used no, to young, look nah, young back then. They be looking grown. All. <laughs> so let's say you know 18 year old girl she looks about 25 and you, you know got the boobs but all that yeah. and you don't know what's up mm -hmm. you know she a little fast little thing she ain't telling you her age right away she ain't you know lie about it but you ain't really ask because you just assume i so, gotta stop you who, who said you can't ask no, you can ask. Oh, you just oh. didn't ask yet because you just oh. made the assumption. You know, if you go to like high school or whatever, like we both seniors, I'm not gonna thank your 25. Like you yeah. in high school with me, yeah. so I don't know. Maybe you you see somebody at a club and it happened to be 21 and over kind of situation. Yeah. They ain't got the X on the hand, but you don't know that she knew the bouncer. So nah. you kind of like think she of age kind of thing. Like you don't know. Get caught so. Up, caught up. I'm I'm that setting shit, the tone shit, for you. You feel me? So like three months in, like y'all talking or whatever, like. And then she drops you with the age. Mm. Is it you done? Or it's like, nah, she mature at this point. Like, you know, I do I da da da. I'm, uh, I'm done. I should have asked that like three months in. If I ain't asked three months in, and then I'm, what I'm about to be mad and be like, nah, young, we forever. Nah, that's going back on my word. I ain't going to hold you. I can't fade that one. I can't fade it. You just gonna bounce like that, it don't matter yeah, how you feel, like love. she's just it young. It ain't even about love or none of that. Go ahead and enjoy your life. Holla at me later. I'm not gonna hold you. Yeah. I respect it. Nah, that's real. Dang, I the like day that. I that sounds like selfless. We go to the club and the bouncer say, nah, she can't get in. I'm like, ho, what you mean? But I know him. <laughs> nah, ho, what? That's a whole thing. Nah, I can't rock. Can't that's rock. a fact. Nah, that was very selfless because. Yeah. That's real. I don't know if I ask somebody else that question, what kind of answer I probably get. <laughs> so, uh, nah, I feel that. All right, so next one. Industry beefs and news are all... I can all... take these off, though, right? You can. Like, You're more than welcome to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, good luck, yeah. That's real. <laughs> you know when you got big glasses and everybody looking at them? I thought everybody was staring at my headphones or something. So Boy, like, right. you funny. All right, Not so bad. pay attention. I'm going to say this once. I feel this. All right, so industry beefs and news are orchestrated. It's nothing more than a ploy to remain relevant. You can't name one artist who hasn't been sucked into the shenanigans. You with that or no? I mean, I'm on your side. I believe it. Yeah, oh, this ain't necessarily me. You oh. feel me? Oh. <laughs> now you're good, though. I'm with it, I don't though. really like I'm to share it. my know, opinion unless I ask. I know that it's real, you know. I know that's a lot of stuff planned out here. And if it's a way to advance your career, it's still marketing at the end of the day. Can you name someone that had, that ain't dipped and dabbed and none of that and they just took the high road and they just I mean, not I want to say it. I want to say logic, but somehow his name always ends up in somebody beefing with him too. So if you don't acknowledge the beef, it don't mean you're not beefing with him. Somebody still got beef with you. They're going to still use your name to clout and get up and escalate their career, get more followers, do whatever they got to do at the end of the day. So everybody's a clout chaser. If they say somebody else's name at the end of the day, they bringing them up for a reason. So everybody can hear it and be like, oh, yeah, bro, Slim was just talking about you. Oh, yeah, my man just said the same thing. Go Simple. click the link. And everybody increasing like that. And if you do it the right way, like how you just said it, hey, let's go ahead and make this money up real fast. Hey, I'm beefing with you for like 20 minutes. I'm beefing with you for like three months. We all eating it together, but, it, you know, it's a stage thing. It's just like wrestling. We gave you a So you for it. I mean, I'm not going to say... I'm gonna, I don't want to say necessarily for because it, it sounds like, yeah, like, let's, you know let's get together and start nah, this beat. I ain't about to sit there and do that one, but I'm saying it's what it is. I recognize it for what it is. It's a lot of fake beef out here, and it's real beef out here. So you're not opposed that. to it? No, nah, no. Nah. 
if it come about to it and somebody like, hey, bro, we can make this money. Yeah, bro, just beef with me for like 20 minutes. You know, I'm like, what? Why? We really got to do that? Like, do we really got to beef right now just to Man, get Man, it's for 100000 It's 100000 bro. Come on. Just for like a couple right, months. Let's have a fake my, fight. I'm going to have my assistant beef with you, but I'm not physically beefing with you. Because, you know what I'm saying, me beefing with you is something different. You know what I'm saying? That's that's like a face-to-face thing. You, you throwing my name in the dirt now. But if you're using that as a joke, you know what I'm saying? Right, I'm, not under the, I'm not under the account. You know what I'm saying? I got somebody else running the account now. So you beefing with that account. You ain't beefing with me. That's so how I So when you it. get in the interview, you know are you playing saying? along with it? Nah, when you start getting questioned about it? No, I'm not going to play along You don't say, nah, man, it was nah, fake. They gave us nah, I'm just not going to say it ain't fake. I'm just, we ain't beefing. If you want to feel like it's fake, that's on you. You automatically going to feel like it's fake. I can't make you think any of it different. If you see the clip and be like, oh, yeah, your, your account said Jay was beefing with uh, Shy Glizzy the other day. I'm like, all right, that's what the account say. <laughs> I just called that nigga this morning. We just had breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. I right, No one should work a nine to five through retirement. People mm. need to boss up and create something for themselves that their family can pass down you and live on. You're working a nine-to-five, even if you make a company for yourself and pass it down, you're still working from nine-to-five. No, like literally, like... Like make a company and legacy and all this other stuff is what you mean? Or what you talking about? What's no. Up? If I decide that I want to work at... McDonald's. Er, that's like the life. go-to. Okay, let's say I want to work at McDonald's, mm-hmm. right? And... I be I get promoted like I'm taking this joint serious. I didn't became manager at this point. Like I'm getting my salary. Like I'm working my nine to five, mm-hmm. and like I'm just happy to be in some kind of management. Would you encourage someone to work through retirement, which of course is forty years of working, like I mean, give or take? So or is it like not nah, like stopping that management? I ain't mean to cut you off, but if you ahead. stop in that management, then I, I'm gonna say something like, "Damn, bro, you've been managing for like five years, bro." You- that's it? You ain't own this junk? You ain't you ain't try to get district or something, bro? You still right. reporting to somebody now? Like, bro, you work harder than everybody around here. You come home smelling like fries and shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like if right. I see you working hard and then they not giving you recognition, go somewhere else, use your resume, and get you that manager money that you're supposed to get and apply for the position that puts you in a better position. But mm-hmm. if you still sitting there and you complacent and you cool with it, I can't change your ways. You want to stay that way, that's on you. I mean, I'm hungry. But you would encourage yeah. to have something beyond that. Yeah. So, yeah, I always ask, you got kids? Nah. nah. Dang, why every man be reacting like nah. that? Nah, that's nah, going to slow up the grind, even though, I, you know what I'm saying, I ain't going to take it away from a lot of new fathers out here. You know what I mean? that, that adds extra drive to you because, you, you know, you got nine months to get it done. And then you got the rest <laughs> of their life to make sure it's happening. But that's nah, a I can't fact. fade it. I feel like it's going to slow my grind up right now. So. But at some point, you would like children. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Preferably a son or Probably daughter like doesn't really matter. 35. 35? 40 or something. Wow, Look, 35? I might freeze some, you know what I'm saying, at 26. Freeze you know some eggs. I mean? And then come back at like, you know what I'm saying? 35 and say, You know, and be like, all right, I can do that. You know what I mean? Son. Okay. You know? If I ain't situated yet, I can't pop them out. I'm going to be you. mad. You no, know I what I'm saying? I'm dealing no, with I it. Respect you that. know? Cause, can I get you some new balance, fool? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> reason why I ask is because so you have you know yeah. your own company mm-hmm. and you know your dad still has what he has and you putting things out through that so let's say you have um, a son and now you didn't created this company will your son be working he for you to be with nah, anybody? He got shares already. He got like all the shares already. I got That's like one percent left to still have control of the company. When I pass or something, go ahead and throw them all at or something. You know what I mean? So is it I'll like that up with whoever else I got it illegitimately or something? You know what I mean? I don't know how that gonna work. But, you know, we deal with that then. No, my question. No, my- <laughs> no you good. No, I respect it. You done already got it all planned yeah. out. I, I'm feeling it. No, my question is because um, would you then provide jobs for your children so now they're just working for you? Like, they don't have to do an interview process, well, nothing. Like, now you, you didn't. It wouldn't be a work for you thing. It'd be work with me thing. It'd be like a partnership. So. Day one, you come out, you know what I'm saying? I'm already had some papers that say you already got this much power and say so and such, but I mean, like... So you don't see them getting a job is really my nah, question. Yeah, you, you already working with me. You ain't working for me. This is a family thing. It's a family business. So I'm going to take it like DJ Khaled. He executive produced my album. Go ahead. I'm with that. I'm with that movement, so... So you feel like 
if you don't have to, like your child does not have to have the experience of going through a job interview process. Like your mind is like, as soon as they come out, you're owning something. You're not even, yeah, you don't even have to experience that's, that. That's, that's why I'm at. You, you can just skip that. See the life we got here. Let's build with that. You know what I mean? If you already don't have to go through that, you ain't got to go through that. That's a fact. I, if we like bankrupt, you know what I mean, and then we gotta go outsource a job or something. Hey, fool, let's go dust that off. Let me go practice with you a little bit. Hey, we struggling, you know. Right. <laughs> we need you to get a job at six, you know what I'm saying? But <laughs> till then, <laughs> you funny. Hey, yeah, you gonna have to pitch in or something. You, know you put them in school. Or you homeschooling. Hey, I'm gonna put them in school. Public school is, you know, it teach you to be somebody. You know what I mean? You get tough skin in public school. If you can't make it through public school, you know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like you can make it through life. That's just me. I don't want to be too literal. No, but, you you could. You know what I mean? It, it makes it, it adds that extra alligator skin, crocodile skin or whatever. Your mama jokes and all that, it's nothing. <laughs> nothing. You know Thanks. what I'm saying? That Twitter beef, that all this, they just words now. You know what I mean? I don't went through school. You got to say it in my face now. And then I'm still like, where? Oh, all right. I, I got I my money to you, I got, I'm banking. I'm good. You, you know ain't got to entertain that. That's what I'm talking about. It is about. what it is. So out of choice. curiosity, what's your faith? Are you like on the Allah side? You, I mean, uh, what you doing? I don't have a religion. To be okay. honest with you. I don't practice religion. You're spiritual? Nah. You atheist? Yeah, we can go with that. Okay. I just don't use the term. Okay, yeah, because, I mean, I don't know who That's created this. It is very, very, it's very strong, strong, and it has word. a lot of negative connotations yeah, so, towards it. So yeah. um, what would you like to call it, or what do you call it? Undecided. Undecided. I'm undecided. It's you, just anytime anybody talk about religion, I'm going to just let you talk about it, but I will not, you know, give you an opinion on it. If you need it, you need it. Some you, people need religion. Some people need a... I don't want to offend nobody. Right. So it's kind of hard to talk about religion. And since I'm, like, kind of a passive person, I just dodge that. If you want it, you want it. You're not on it, you're not on it. So when you're going through something, you don't look to a mm-hmm. higher power. It's whatever is, like, happening, you just go with the flow. He, he not going to fix this. I still got three months, and that's not going to change it. I'm okay. not going to hold you. I'm a realist. Did you grow up in, like, a church? or? Yeah, yeah. My, my whole family is... Like, I, they in the church. I, my aunt's a preacher. My, <laughs> my uncle's a pastor. Like oh, it's, wow. It's, it's like in there. They in there. We got, we got reverends in there. The whole family in the church. And that's what makes it weird. I do live sound for church, too. Like, mm. part-time. Like So, it's kind of like dancing. I'm hitting the button over there. It's kind of like dancing on, like, thin ice. But it is what it is. You do what you got to do. So, at some point, were you a believer? No. Nah, you never I, were. I've, I've always fell asleep in church. Every time, <laughs> like it, that's real. It's not even a hesitation. I, I walk in there, I get the right seat, I set up. Did your family know? Yeah, yeah, I get the elbow every time. I got strong ribs now, but hey, I wasn't listening. I'm not gonna hold you. My ears be closed to all of that. So when you do decide to settle down, get into a relationship, blah blah blah. Um, cause that I've, seems I've to be dated a, I've goal. dated a, a church girl. It's just pretty difficult, but hey. So yeah. ideally, when you're looking for a wife, you want someone with similar ideals, which nah, is no, nah, no. You could be you. So how do you just raise a child in that you. situation? It, the child has a choice. Everybody has a choice. If you need that religion, you need that crutch in life. You need, you know, I don't want to say it's a crutch, but hey, that's how I see it. If you need that, you need it. Gotcha. Choose your choice. You don't need it. You don't need it. It's a mental thing how I see it, you know. So it's like you and mom can go to church, but if you ain't feeling it, you can stay home with me. But yeah. I'm going to teach you, like, real things about life. But if you feel like you need some kind of higher power, then you might want to look to your mom for that because yeah, she believes more in that. moms for a little bit, and when you want to, you know, kick it, we can go kick it out of church. It ain't all day. If you really want to be 100% Christian where you win this thing blood in, blood out, I'm with it. I support you. I can't change you. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But, you know, if you ain't blood in and blood out with that, then, you know, you're on my side. We just living. But, you know, you need a nanny cam, you got a nanny cam. It is what it is. (laughs) I feel you on that. (laughs) So what is your next big project, or what should we be looking for Uh, coming from you? I'm supposed to be shooting a video this weekend. Um, Shout out to Georgie George. Uh, uh, I'm 
supposed to be getting that together this weekend. I wrote like four treatments for it, but we getting everything as far as the actresses together for the shoot. Um, I can't film it myself. That's the problem because I got to be behind the camera. But it's it's just, it's a real storyboard behind a lot of these, and we just basically waiting to release them. We already got two in the like in the stockpile. We just not gonna drop them yet. I already released like four new singles that's on Spotify. One of them got twenty thousand uh, streams. That's uh, no ways. And drama has like what fifteen and you know stuff like that. We're just Dang. waiting for more numbers to to actually release some more stuff and increase more followers, increase more traffic. Period. Before we release anything, we just want to be able to drop consistently instead of oh yeah, dang, we dropped two videos. We gotta go shoot two more now and then hurry up and rush edit them jumps to get them out to keep stay consistent. Now nah, we can't deal with that. I feel you on that. Yeah. That's right. All right, so where can we find you? I would just type in Danny with the flicks on Google. That's on everywhere. Title pop. Is it with the flicks or yeah, is it with, with the, the flicks? flicks? With the flicks. It got the D in it. So it's W I T D A flicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. If you put Danny flicks, it still send you to the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. All right, so we're going to find you on Instagram, Twitter, Spotify. Well, well I'm, I'm not going to hold you. I'm not active at all on Twitter. I got a Twitter, but I'm on this non Twitter movement thing. Okay. Where I just don't get on it. Is it because you don't want to tweet about your life or you feel like you can maneuver in this industry without Twitter? Like, where is. I think I can move without Twitter. Some people think they can move without IG. Some people think they can move without a platform. I'm going to dedicate to one and build on the next. Okay. I'm with that. That was yeah. Danny Flicks. Danny with <laughs> the Flicks. I'm Diamond B. Frazier. You were tuning in to Kid Back DMV.